Well, good morning and welcome. Happy Christmas. Or as Shaken Stevens would sing, Merry Christmas, everyone. Whether you've just woken up, or the presents are all unwrapped, or your children have gone hyper, or you've forgotten to put the oven on for the turkey, it's all right, you can go and do it right now. You are very welcome to our Christmas Day service at Wood Green Church. Now, normally, we would have loved to have met you in person. The church would have been rocking on Christmas Day. It's the busiest that it is all year. But sadly, because of you know what, we can't do that this year. But that doesn't mean that the good news of Jesus coming to be with us at Christmas isn't still something we can celebrate and find extremely exciting and important and essential for us as we think about Christmas this year. And Abby is going to help us now with our first reading. Go for it, Abby. Now, what should we take from the tree, Jim? Is there any chocolates? Should I look at the chocolates? All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. Happy Christmas. We will now sing, O come, O come, Emmanuel.
Hi there. Happy Christmas. Happy Christmas. Duncan and Megan here. Let's pray. Matthew writes, she will give birth to a son and you are to give him the name Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. Heavenly Father, thank you that you so loved the world that you gave your one and only son, the Lord Jesus, so that anyone who believes in him might not perish, but have eternal life. We praise you today for the sending of your son, Jesus, to be with us and to be for us. Thank you that Jesus is Emmanuel. And we rejoice today, therefore, with our brothers and sisters all around the world. Help us to marvel at this good news of great joy of you drawing near to your people. Thank you that Jesus came to us to save us from our sins. Thank you that Jesus came to dispel the darkness and misery which permeates our world. Thank you that the newborn King of Christmas is the King of Kings, ruling and reigning the universe still today. We pray for those in our church family today who are spending it alone. We pray that they would especially know your closeness to them. We pray too for NHS workers and other key workers working over this Christmas period. We pray you would sustain them and they would have time to reflect upon and enjoy the good news of Christmas. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Over to Harriet for our Bible reading. Our reading today is from Matthew chapter 1, verses 18 to 25. This is how the birth of Jesus the Messiah came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law and yet did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son and you are to give him the name of Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All of this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son and they will call him Emmanuel which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took Mary home as his wife. But he did not consummate their marriage until she gave birth to a son, and he gave him the name Jesus. AJ will now teach us from this passage. Thanks, Harriet. Well, given it's Christmas Day, I feel like I should be the queen delivering a televised Christmas message. But instead, I have a message from you from the king. And it's this. This year, so many of us have experienced the feeling of not having people with us. We've been so used to seeing people whenever and wherever we liked, but the restrictions of this year have meant that we can't. And I know for many of us that has been hard. Maybe you weren't able to celebrate a birthday or anniversary with family. Or perhaps there's been a funeral and you haven't been able to grieve properly with your family at the death of a loved one. Even today, on Christmas Day, a day for families if ever there was one, you may be watching this with some of your family, but you've had to make difficult decisions about who you could spend Christmas with and who you couldn't. Maybe in fact you are self-isolating alone and unable to see any of your family. This year has reminded us of the value we place on being with people because we've all had to feel a sense of distance from those whom we love. And so our passage this morning that Harriet and Abby have read to us from the Bible couldn't be more relevant. It couldn't give us more good news because it announced the birth of one who had come to be with us and never leave us. The birth of Jesus came after a period of hundreds of years where God's people had felt distant from God. The prophets whom God had used to speak to the people had been well and truly furloughed. And for the people of Matthew's day, God couldn't have felt more distant. 
He was certainly more than two metres away, and now we all know what two metres away is, don't we? Which is why the angel's announcement to Joseph in verse 23 would have been such wonderful news. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. The birth of Jesus was the coming true of a promise made by the prophet Isaiah some 700 years before. It showed that God had not forgotten his plan to rescue sinners like you and me. You see, by nature, we cut ourselves off from God. We choose to live a life of isolation from him. We live in his world, but choose to have nothing to do with him. And one thing many of us have discovered about isolation is it's not very fun. The novelty of being isolated wears off quite quickly and we're left feeling sad and cut off from people. And that's because God meant us to have relationships. He made us for that, especially a relationship with him. And whilst God in his kindness protects us from the full effects of choosing to self-isolate from him one day, we will feel the effects of that choice by being forever cut off from the God who made us and loves us. And yet the good news at Christmas is that we can remember that Jesus has made a way back for us to have a relationship with God. His birth shows us that God has not kept his distance from us. Jesus came fully God and fully man and lived among us, Emmanuel, God with us. Which means that you and I don't have to live a life of self-isolation from God anymore. We don't have to bear the forever penalty that being without God would bring. And so on a day where many relationships may feel distant to us, where we may be sad about who we can't be with, God doesn't have to be one of those people. And this is what Christmas is all about. And we're going to sing a song that reminds us of that now. And you might want to grab something you can use as an air guitar for this. And I'm going to use Jimmy. Off we go. Christmas indeed. Well, as AJ has been showing us, Jesus is Emmanuel, God with us. God is not distant from us. God has come close through the birth of Jesus that first Christmas. But for us to really appreciate the gift 
of God the Father sending God the Son into the world, we need to remember why Jesus came and what it cost him. In Matthew 1 verse 21, we read these words, She, Mary, will give birth to a son and you are to give him the name Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. See, Jesus didn't just come to be physically close to us. Jesus came close to us to save us. He came in human flesh to make the rescue mission possible and save us from our sin. The Son of God knew that coming to earth would cost him everything. We're going to watch a short animation made by our friends at Speak Life. It's a film which imagines a conversation between God the Son and God the Father. We get a glimpse of the world from God's perspective. And the question we are left to consider as we watch is this. Would you go there? Standing in the shoes of the Son of God, knowing it would cost you everything, would you go there? Would you go there? Would you go there knowing that it would cost you everything? Glenn Scrivener, who made that animation, summarised what he wanted to communicate like this. Christmas is God's answer to the question, would you go there? Christmas is God's answer to the question, would you go there? Christmas is an emphatic yes. God came into the world at Christmas. What we get a picture of in that animation is the Son of God looking on at the world in its beauty and its brokenness, in its joy and in its misery, in its light and in its darkness, in its vitality and in its death. He looks at the world and he says, let me go there out of love for his people in the world. He says, let me go there knowing that it will cost him everything. The bare tree in the film 
That represents the cross that Jesus knew his birth would lead to. The maker of the film said he wanted to convey that Jesus coming into the world at Christmas would inevitably lead to Easter. Jesus says, let me go there knowing that Easter will come. Knowing that he would need to die in order to do what Matthew tells us he was born to do, to save us from our sins. The father sent his son into the world to be the saviour of the world. And so Christmas Day today is an opportunity for us to rejoice that Jesus has come to save us from our sins. And even Jesus' very name is a preview of what he came to do. For Jesus means the Lord saves. And for us, looking back at the events of Jesus' life and death, it is a reminder of what Jesus has done for us in saving us as we put our trust in him. Okay, change of scene, just to check you're all still following. I want you to imagine that you create a world, a beautiful, breathtaking paradise for the little people there to enjoy. Maybe you could have a go, children, at home at making a paradise world in a box like I've tried to here. Everything in this world is just as it's meant to be, just the way you intended it to be. Until one day, suddenly, without warning, the people living there shut the lid and shut you out and they decide they want to do things their way and make a terrible mess. How would you feel? What would you do? Would you be willing to stoop to enter the box for the people you made but have shut you out? Would you be willing to step in, lock down in that world and sort out the mess? Would you be willing to become small, even if that meant giving everything up that you had in your life now? Well, that is just a glimpse of what Jesus did for us on that first Christmas. Children, if you get bored with your presents, why not grab an empty shoebox this afternoon and have a go at making your paradise world? And once it's all messed up, think, would you be willing to stoop to enter it to save the people there. In 1948, a Washington DC radio station asked ambassadors in the capital what each of them most wished for Christmas. The French ambassador said, I wish for world peace, complete peace throughout the entire world. The Russian ambassador said, I wish for an end to the enslavement of people through imperialism. And the British ambassador says, that's very kind of you to ask. This Christmas, I would like a box of crystallized fruit sweets, please. Now let's not make the mistake of that British ambassador. Let's not set our sights too low this Christmas. Let's not settle for lights and a few Amazon parcels and maybe a few fruity sweets when what is on offer is the gift of God, Jesus Emmanuel. The one who said, let me go there, who has come to us to save us from our sins and bring us an eternal salvation. Let's not settle for less than that when the greatest gift of all is Jesus, God with us, come to save us from our sins. In a moment, we're going to watch a short film advertising a course we're running here at Wood Green in the new year called Christianity Explored. If you would like to know more about this Jesus who is God with us, this Jesus who says, let me go there to save people from their sins, this might be a really appropriate course for you. It's relaxed and informal, and it'll be kicking off on the 11th of January here at Wood Green. Take a look at this video and head to our website if you would like more details.
What's the best news you've ever heard? Joy to the world, the Lord has come. Let earth receive her King. Amen. Well, thank you for joining us on Christmas Day. And thank you to Speak Life for letting us use your animation. Do check out Speak Life's YouTube channel and there are social media channels. You'll find lots of other excellent videos for you to watch, enjoy and share. One of those videos is a poem called The Coming by R.S. Thomas. And that poem is the basis, the inspiration for the video we watched today. Just a reminder for regulars that in two days time, Sunday the 27th of December, our morning service will be online only. You'll be able to watch that on YouTube at 10.30 in the morning. And uh, God willing, on Sunday the 3rd of January, we'll be back to in-person services in the building. Please do book in for those via the website if you intend to come. 
Well, Matthew's gospel begins with the declaration that God has entered the world in the person of Jesus, our Emmanuel, God with us. And Matthew's gospel ends with these words of the resurrected Jesus. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Jesus is born Emmanuel, God with us, and Jesus remains with us today. If we're trusting in him, Jesus is with us today. Have a very Merry Christmas.